What we're going to look at today is how to do something called integrated rate laws and also figure out the half-life of a reaction. Now, you might be wondering why we would take the rate laws that we've been studying and integrate them. Why would we take this uh, pretty little thing called chemistry and roll in some calculus to go with it? Uh, well, sometimes a chemist would need to know how long a reaction must proceed to get to a certain concentration of reactant or product, or you might want to know at a quick snapshot moment of time what the reactant or product concentrations are. So after a minute has passed, what's your concentration of your reactant, for example. Um, I promise you that the calculus that you're going to be seeing here today is not bad. Um, you don't have to derive any of it at all. Um, and quite frankly, you guys could run circles around me with your calculus knowledge because I haven't done it in uh, like almost 30 years. <laughs> so I promise it's not bad. We'll take a look at zero order, first order, and second order reactions when it comes to this integrated rate law stuff. Um, the AP College Board does not expect you to know how to do any kind of integrated rate law with anything that has a higher order than two. So there will be no third order, fourth order reactions here. So if you had a zero order reaction where your reactants are, are turning into products, uh, our R would be disappearing, right? So um, our R final, in theory, would be zero. Our R initial is whatever the concentration is at the beginning. Because our rates are always uh, put in terms of a positive value, that's why we flip that sign, because our final would be smaller than our initial. And then if it's a zero order rate law, that means that our exponent, our order, for the concentration of R would be zero. Well, anything to the zero power is just one. If you take that integrated rate law, and I kind of joke with my students that you kind of put uh, this rate law equation into the magical calculus machine, what happens is that your change of your concentration over time, so R sub O here is your original concentration at time equals zero, and then RT is your concentration at some point later on. That would be equal to the rate law constant, K, times your time. If you wanted to, you could figure out what the units are of that K um, by dividing. To get the K by itself, you'd have to divide both sides by time. And so our molarity, moles per liter, over time for those zero order reactions. If you have a first order reaction, what would that look like? So our first order reaction, now we have R raised to the imaginary first power here. If we throw this into the magical calculus machine here, um, you would get that the natural log of R at some time t minus the natural log of R originally would be equal to negative kt. You might also see it as a natural log of this ratio of RT over O. These two expressions mean the exact same thing. The K for first order reactions has units of one over time. It's independent of concentration. There is no concentration factor there in that um, in that value of K. There's no moles per liter or anything like that. So what that means is if it's more convenient for you to measure your concentration of R in some other form, if it would be easier for depending on what you're measuring to measure that value of R in moles or grams or number of molecules or if it's a gas and you wanted to measure pressure, um, that would work. You don't have to use a molarity or a concentration for first order. So here's an example of a first order reaction using that integrated rate law. So if you take the chemical cyclopropane and convert it into propene in a first order reaction, the rate law would be K, our rate law constant, times cyclopropane to the imaginary first power. If our K value was inverse hours here, 
they tell you that the initial concentration of cyclopropane is 0 0.05 molar. We want to know how much time it would take for that concentration to drop to 0 0.01 molar. We just substitute in our values for R cyclopropane's concentration at some time t and the original concentration. When we start plugging in our numbers, solving for t, we would get a time of 0.665 hours. Now these equations, the zero order equation, the first order equation here, the second order equation are all on the equation sheet for the AP exam. So you don't actually have to memorize the equations. You need to just know which equation goes with which order because it's not labeled. Um, they don't try and trick you. The zero order uh, integrated rate law expression is the first one and then um, the first order one is the next one down on the list, and the second order one is the one at the bottom of the list. Um, but you just need to know how to use them and which one goes with which type of order. If you use the wrong equation for the wrong um, reaction, then obviously you won't get the right answer. What about if you had a second order reaction? So our order was two. If we take this rate law and throw it into the magical calculus machine and integrate this expression here, what that turns into is the inverse of R concentration at some time t minus the inverse of the original concentration of R is equal to positive kt. So just be careful that zero order reaction was equal to a positive kt the second order reaction equal to a positive KT, um, but the first order reaction is equal to a negative KT. The units for K and a second order reaction are liters per mole over time. Let's see an example of using that second order rate law expression, the integrated rate law. So if we have the chemical HI, hydroiodic acid, it decomposes over time into hydrogen gas and iodine, according to this reaction that you see here. So second order, our exponent here would be a 2. If our original concentration of HI was 0 0.01 molar, and we knew what our rate law uh, constant was, you could solve for what the concentration of HI would be after a certain amount of time by plugging in everything that we know into this integrated rate law idea. So we start substituting in our numbers. We're looking for what the concentration is 12 minutes into this reaction, so we don't know what the concentration is after some time t, but we know that the HI concentration started at 0 0.01 molar. We know the value of k, and we know that we're looking for that concentration of HI 12 minutes in. So a little bit of number crunching on your calculator, solver, and you can see that after a while, your HI concentration would be 0 0.0022.